Good afternoon. I'm John Auden, the RA consultant for Kentucky WMU and Kentucky Baptist. And I'm back this week for another campcraft lesson. And uh, this week, what I want to do is show you how to tie the sheet bin knot and the tiller's knot. Uh, information about these two knots can be found on pages 53 for the sheet bin knot and 55 for the tiller's knot in the campcraft manual. I've been showing you the campcraft manual here. And again, that manual can be downloaded for free at kywmu.org slash campcraft. And it has all the information that I'm sharing with you today and have been sharing with you for the past several weeks. It also has the uh, requirements, uh, a list of requirements in the annex of the manual uh, for each of the patch levels. And um, these two knots that I'm teaching today um, can be used to help you earn the camper patch or the pathfinder patch. Uh, for both of those patches, you need to know how to tie um, a joiner knot. And uh, both of these knots are joiner knots. In fact, the reason I'm teaching both of them today is that they are very similar knots. Uh, they have one uh, difference in how you tie them, and there is difference in their uses as well. And I will talk about that um, as I show you how to tie the knot. So uh, to start with, I'm going to switch my camera around to the back side of my computer, and then I'm going to show you how to tie the sheet bin knot. All right, so the sheet bin knot is a knot that is used to join together two ropes of different sizes. So you see I have this larger rope here, and then I have a smaller, it's not even really a rope necessarily, but a piece of cord that's smaller. Um, sometimes uh, you will see people uh, use them to tie the corner of something like a tarp or um, a hammock or some kind of a, a bed sheet even. Uh, if you want to tie the corner of that to a, a cord, uh, you can use this knot as well. And so um, that's the use of it, tying together or joining together uh, two ropes or cords of different sizes. And so um, the way you tie it is you start out with the larger rope or the larger cord and you take the working end and you create what is called a bite or a bend in the rope between the working end and the standing part. All of this down here is the, is the standing part of the rope. So you create this bite or this bend um, in, in your larger rope. All right, and then you take the end of your smaller rope and you pass it through the bite from below like this and then you bring it underneath and around both parts of that bite both the working end and the standing part you bring that all the way around and back on top here and you pass it across the top, but in doing so, you also pass it underneath the standing part of itself. So as you can see here, I've gone underneath. Let's see if I can lay that down and make that a little bit clearer. So I've come up from underneath. I've gone around both parts of this bite and then I've come back across the top of the bite, but underneath the standing part of itself. And you pull that through like that. And then all you do is you just tighten it up by pulling on the standing part of your two ropes. And that'll tighten down just like that. And there that knot will hold this larger rope and this smaller rope 
together. Now you can see I don't have a say a bed sheet here with me, but if you were to consider this the corner of a bed sheet or the corner of a tarp, for instance, you can take that corner and kind of pull it into a long piece like this and then just bend that gathered corner over like this and make a bite in it just like that. And then you could take a another piece of cord that you're using and you could do exactly the same thing I did before up through the bottom, around the bottom, up through the bottom and then wrap around underneath and then bring this back up and pass it underneath the standing part but across the top of the larger rope and then you just pull it up tight and that would allow you to um, tie a smaller cord to the corner of a tarp or to the corner of a bed sheet or something like that and uh, so that's how you tie this knot together it's a it's a very secure knot it keeps that smaller cord from slipping away from the larger cord it does that by putting pressure here on top of this, it squeezes the larger one together, which in turn squeezes the smaller one where it's come underneath of itself and pinches it down with pressure so that it doesn't release. And um, if this knot was under pressure all the time, it would be very difficult uh, to untie. But if I release the pressure on both ends, I can take a hold of that and work it loose and um, Take that knot loose just like that. So that's the sheet bend knot and that's how you tie it. Um, I'm going to tie it one more time but I'm not going to pull it up tight because I want you to be able to see it in comparison to the next knot that I tie. So I create a bend or a bite in the larger rope. I bring the smaller rope up through that and then pass it around underneath the bite and then back across the top of the bite but underneath the standing part of that smaller cord so you have something that looks like this and so I'm just going to lay that there kind of where you can see it and uh, see what it looks like now I'm going to show you the tiller's knot uh, for the tiller's knot you use it to combine uh, two cords of the same size or two cords of different sizes uh, because it's basically the same knot with one difference. I'm going to use my uh, other cord here that's uh, color coded on either side. I'm going to leave the yellow tip on the left like I did with my sheet bin knot and use my blue tip here like I did with my blue cord. And I'm going to tie what's called a tiller's knot. And it's a knot that you, the difference in it is that you can release it uh, more easily even when the knot is under pressure. So again you start out and you take, I'm using the one on the left here so it matches what I did down here. You take one rope and take the end of it and you create a bite in it just like this. Then you take the other rope here, my blue tip, and again you pass it up through the bottom just like on the sheet bin pass it around underneath the bite of the other rope. And here's where the big difference comes in. When you get it here, and it's time to pass it over and underneath the standing part of this end, you take this end and you create a bite in it, or a bend. And you pass that bend underneath, like that. And then, you pull it up tight. So if you look at these two, you'll see that they're made the same way. You've got your yellow rope here or the larger rope here with the yellow on it with a bite. You have your other end, smaller cord here. In this case, this one with the blue tip on it. And you come up from underneath, pass around, and then when you pass it through, across the top and underneath the standing part, instead of just putting the end all the way through like I did here, you create a bite so that your end is over on this side. And then when you pull this up tight, like that, 
there's your knot. It's going to hold, but if it's not as under pressure, you can take hold of this end right here and it'll pull right out. And so it, it releases quickly because you use that bite um, at the end of the knot. So I'll tie it again. You create a bite on this end. Bring the other rope end up un from underneath. Pass it around from underneath and then pass it around underneath the bite on the other rope. And then when you get ready to pass it back across the top and under this standing part, you create a bite in it or a loop or not a loop, but a bend. And you put that bend underneath there, but leave the end of it out here. And then you just start pulling on your standing parts and you just pull that up tight like that. And there you've got a nice secure knot, but it's also one that you could grab a hold here and release very easily. So that's the tiller's knot. I'm going to tie it one more time, but leave it loose so you can, and lay it by my other one so you can see, see the difference. There's my bite there at the end. And I'll just kind of pull this up. I'll lay it there. So you've got, it's basically the same knot. The difference is right here. This one finishes with a bite. This one just pulls all the way through. And this one is designed to work with a larger rope and a smaller rope. This one, uh, you can use with two that are same size. I mean, theoretically, you could use this one with two cords of the same size, but it's designed to to help you join together two different size cords. And then, of course, here we've got uh, two of the same size, but we've got the bite on it here, so it can be released quickly. All right, so those are our two knots, the sheet bend knot and the tiller's knot. I'm going to switch my uh, camera back to the other side. Let me push these back out here and give you one more look at them. All right, I'm going to switch my camera back and then we'll make a mission application with this knot in our RA lesson. So uh, last week we began to learn about um, Ryan and Kelly, who are missionaries in Nagoya, Japan. And um, when I was thinking about the lesson today and, and teaching these two knots and I thought about that pressure that the knot the two cords exert on each other which holds that knot tight and how on the tillers uh, knot there's that method that device with that bite in there that allows you to release that pressure and it reminded me about Ryan and Kelly and one of the challenges they face we talked about last week they face the challenge of uh, the perception of Christianity in Japan. And uh, another challenge they face is the um, experience of cultural pressure that the people of Japan uh, uh, feel themselves. There in Japan, there's a great cultural pressure for the people to fit in, um, to behave in a very expected and ordered kind of way. Um, Ryan and Kelly in the lesson about them even go so far to say there's a correct way to hand a business card uh, to someone else and to receive that business card. So there's a lot of uh, cultural formalities uh, which lend themselves to cultural pressure upon um, the people in Japan. And one of the things that Ryan and Kelly have learned is that um, one of the ways to deal with that cultural pressure is if you have someone who, who's a, a Japanese person, but they're already a believer, if you can equip and train them to share their faith with their friends and neighbors, um, the fact that the gospel is coming from uh, another Japanese person, it helps to release that, that pressure, that cultural pressure, 
and allows the person hearing to be more open uh, to hearing the truth about Jesus Christ. And so that, that's what made me think of the tiller's knot. Uh, you've got that knot, it's got pressure holding it together, but you have that one key uh, method, uh, that bite that you can pull on that releases that pressure and opens that knot up. And uh, in a very similar kind of way, in Japan, one of the strategies for uh, addressing the cultural pressure in the Japanese culture is to train and equip and mobilize um, Japanese believers to go out and share the truth about Jesus. And as they share the truth, uh, that pressure is lessened and people are more open um, to hearing about uh, Jesus Christ and what he has done for them in the life that he has to give. At the end of the lesson for this week in, in the book, uh, Ryan and Kelly asked for people to pray for them. And, and this is the prayer that they asked for. It says, uh, please pray for the Japanese believers. May they show their friends how the grace of the gospel breaks down the walls and allows people to love each other no matter what culture has taught them. Pray for them to share, share, and share the gospel with their own people. Uh, so there you go. That's our mission application uh, and, and um, how that Tiller's knot and that sheet bin knot can help us to understand better what Ryan and Kelly are doing as they seek to share the gospel uh, in Nagoya, Japan, and how they partner. It's really, it's a partnership between them and the Japanese believers to work together uh, to address that cultural pressure and to share the gospel with those who need to hear it. So thank you for uh, joining me for this uh, campcraft lesson. Uh, remember to pray for Ryan and Kelly and to lift them up and to pray, especially for the Japanese believers, that God would bless them and send them out to share the gospel uh, with their friends and with their neighbors. All right. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next week.